Hello and welcome to the workshop. On today's episode, I'm going to take this beautiful piece of bell and make a ring box. So Nicole's been asking me to make her a ring box for a while now, and since I have this beautiful piece of bell, now's the time to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is pick a spot on here that'll make a nice blank and then cut it out. So now that I have my main piece cut, I can knock off these edges to fit in my container. So now that the burl's all shaped and fits in the container, the next thing I'm going to do is clean it up so it's ready for casting. So normally this is the part of the video where you'd see me stabilize this piece of burl in some stabilizing resin. But if you guys saw the vlog earlier this week, you'd know that today is Thursday and that I've only got two days to finish this. So I'm going to do it a little different. I'm going to take my piece of burl, I'm going to put it inside this container and fill it with epoxy resin. I'm then going to put it in the vacuum chamber and create a vacuum which will pull all the air out of the burl. Now once I release that vacuum, all the epoxy resin will be sucked into where the air was. Now it's not going to penetrate as deep as stabilizing resin, but it's definitely going to be enough for what I need. Because when I turn this on the lathe, I'm only going to take a thin layer off here, which means I still shouldn't get any movement. It is fairly hot in the workshop today, it's about 30 degrees, so I'm not going to have too much pot life with this resin. It's going to be about half an hour or so, so I'll have to work fairly fast in getting this into the container and then into the vacuum chamber. Now don't worry about this extra resin, because I'm about to give it to Nicole. Now let's get this in the pot.
Well, that looks nice and clean. It does look like we've got a couple of bubbles on top there, but that's not going to affect us too much because they're right on the surface. And I'm going to turn that bit off. But yeah, apart from that, this is looking really good. Now we just need to get it out of here and get it onto a waste block. I think I might need some air. There we go. You know, the more I look at this, the more it looks like a brain inside a jar. I better not tell Nicole. Hopefully it looks a bit different after I've turned it. Keep covering you guys in resin. Well, it's looking pretty good. I've just got to take a little bit more down here by the looks of it. Then that should be about it. Like I said earlier, I don't want to take too much because I want to make sure this burl does have some sort of stabilization. Now before I take my tailstock off, I am just going to get my scraper and or my skew chisel and I'm just going to scrape these grooves out. So I've just added a little ripple effect on the top there, just so it didn't look so plain with a flat edge. I think it's turned out pretty nice. A little bit of the burl started to expose itself there. Very good. So the next thing I need to do is part my lid off. So now that I have my lid cut off, I'm going to take this forcing a bit and drill out the inside. Oh, look at that. I've exposed a little window on the side here. I'll be able to use that to my advantage.
Well, that took me a while. I was going nice and slow because I wanted to creep up on it because I was trying to create this nice little accent line here. I think it looks all right. I didn't want it too big and I didn't want it too small, but I think that's a good size. Now my next step is sanding, but before I do that, I'm just gonna take my parting tool and just part down the bottom here. I'm not gonna go all the way through, just about an inch or so. Now to stop this lid from flying off while I'm sanding it, I'm just gonna stick it down with some hot glue. So now that I've finished sanding, I'm gonna part this off the waste block and then give it a buff. Now I'm gonna do something a little different on the inside, but I'll explain a bit more later. So now that I've finished polishing the outside, it's time to work on the inside. And for that, I'll be using Flock. So now that my flock's all dry, I'm going to grab this little jewellery display pad and put it inside. So now that that pad's in there, I can cut a little slit to hold these rings. I bought these a while ago to put in an egg. They're just some cheap display rings. Wow. They're not bad for a few bucks. There we go. They look very nice. They almost look real. So I think I might see a couple of comments on this video saying that I missed the opportunity to put an LED light inside. Well, I did think about it and I do have this induction coil with these wireless LEDs. But the problem with these LEDs is the further you go away from the coil, the duller they get. And to put these in the ring box, they're going to have to be about an inch or two off the ground. Now, I will put them inside so you guys can see how they look, but they probably won't be a permanent fixture. But if I do find something a bit better in the future, I'll let you guys know. So before we check out this beautiful ring box and get Nicole's reaction, I wanted to remind you guys that if you want to see a behind the scenes video of how this project was made, check out our latest vlog on our second channel. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. And also, if you want to check out our Etsy store, we've got a whole heap of new items in there. I'll also leave a link in the description. Now let's check out this box.
see what I made ya. Sure. Ta-da! Oh, wow. Look at the detail on the top there. Yeah, I did like a ripple effect. Wow. You can see the little window on the side. Oh, that's so cool. Wow. That's so cool, doll. You like it? Oh, it's beautiful.